that's the trouble with Christians in general. We say, look at this, look at this, look at this. And and then somebody else, well, look at this, look at this. We can do that and we should do that. But the reason why that doesn't quote unquote work is because, hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Richard and we've got some healing and experiences we're going to talk about right now. All right. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far whenever you're watching this. Um, Lots of new subscriptioners. It's a new term I coined just now. Uh, Yeah, thanks for coming along. It's been it's been fun. Yeah, I'd like to do this all the time, but I don't really have any. I don't have a lot of extra time. I'm a husband and a father and a pastor uh, of a small church. And yeah, so four children three girls and a boy, and life is good. The Lord's been good to us. We are going to be talking about this guy, Isaiah Saldivar. Really big YouTuber. Um, He's got a lot of followers and very charismatic, Pentecostally, the whole thing, right? And first of all, he does these short videos, which are just, it's kind of, he doesn't look at the camera. And it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's, It's bizarre. Maybe you know these. Maybe you know who he is. Um, the goal ultimately is to deal with, of contra thoughts in particular, and just any argument, is to deal with the argument and not the person, because that's not really helpful. Just, you know, an ad hominem attack, that's Latin there, just like contra mundum is Latin. Uh, lots, about a half or a third of our language, English language is Latin based. And it just sounds so much better. That's why I, that's why I do that. That's just contra mundum. Uh, I'm, I'm contra mundum, pro mundo, being against the world before the world. Because against the world sounds good, but contra mundum sounds so much better, doesn't it? Anyway, the let's just watch this video and we're going to look at it. Because the problem, the problem that I have with this is, again, I'm not you know attacking him, uh, although some people might say that is he mixes truth with error. This is what always happens, right? You have like 95% truth and 5% error, or 99% truth and 1% error. I've used, used this analogy before where you have, you know, we just had a fellowship meal after church on Sunday. We usually observe the Lord's Supper last Sunday, and then we have a meal after that. Um, and, you know, say one of your church members making a huge, we're in the South, huge vat of sweet tea, right? Sweet, the sweetest tea, the best tea, right? And it's, you know, five gallons. And then you see her, after she's done with it, she sprinkles in a little bit of arsenic, you know, or just, you know, a quarter cup of gasoline <clears throat> for flavor. That's what we do in Kentucky. Puts hair on your chest. And, <laughs> no. Um, and if you saw that, you'd be like, what are you doing? What, why, why did you just, why did you do that? Oh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just making some sweet tea. You're like, yeah, but you just put gasoline in that. Why did you put gas in the, oh, you know, it just brightens up the, the notes on the tea and the sugar and whatnot. You'd think she, first of all, you'd think she was insane. Secondly, you wouldn't drink it, right? But you're like, and then you would say, well, nobody's going to drink that. Why why did you do that? Well, what are you talking about? Pastors, five gallons of sweet tea and just a quarter cup of gas. What's the big deal? Right? What's the big deal? That's what happens so often with false teaching and false ideas, whether it's in the world or just in the Bible in particular, is that things are said, this is mentioned, and I've certainly said false things, I'm sure. Uh, but the, the trick is when you are confronted with it or somebody says, what did you mean by that? Or you just said this, or even last night we were reading and I skipped a line in the Bible. My wife's like, you skipped a line. I was like, I didn't skip a line. I was like, wait. And then I read further. I was like, wait, I just did read. I guess I did skip a line. Like, we're not infallible, you know? And it's <clears throat> it's the point of what happens? What do we do when that happens, right? We're going to play this. I'm going to talk about it just briefly. When John the Baptist's disciples came to Jesus and said, hey, John wants to know if you're the one or should we keep looking? Jesus didn't say, well, what's in the Torah? Jesus didn't say, well, what's in the law? Jesus said, tell him what you've experienced, that the blind see, the deaf hear, demons are cast out, the dead are raised. Tell him your experience. So the son of God uses experience to validate who is who he says he is. And John, believe the miracles, 
Believe the signs and wonders and know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. So these are experiences that they had. So we can't discredit people's experiences and say, oh, well, I know you got healed of cancer, but God doesn't heal today. That's just your experience. It doesn't line up with the Bible. No, you don't line up with the Bible because you don't live the Bible. Okay. You don't live the Bible. <clears throat> and that's the thing. This guy's using the Bible. We all use the Bible. And that's the trouble um, with everything. No, <laughs> that's the trouble with Christians in general. We say, look at this, look at this, look at this. And, and then somebody else, well, look at this, look at this. We can do that and we should do that. But the reason why that doesn't quote unquote work is because the context is what defines what's happening. Okay. And as we'll see here in a moment, so much of the context of what, what is happening is prophecy fulfilled. Old Testament. I mean, let's not forget, Jesus was Jewish. He's in the Middle East. He wasn't wearing a white robe. He didn't have light skin. He wasn't black either. Like, multiple things that just get infused into our minds. We think, oh, this, this, and this. And it's like, but this book was written after this book. Like, we don't, we don't, we don't think of, you know, Moses not having a Bible or Abraham or Adam. We don't think of David writing the Psalms in the way that he did and this and this and this. And it's like, he's also an adulterer and a murderer, but he's also a man after God's own heart. Now, a lot of people know that, you know, kind of example. So this man here says, Jesus doesn't say, go look at the Torah, the law, the same thing. That's just synonymous. But really, I take this as him also saying, don't, don't look at the scripture, Right. Because what does he compare it to? He says, don't look at the law of the Torah. Maybe he meant to say the law or the prophets. Probably is a better way to say that because that's the whole Old Testament. But he does, though. This guy's totally wrong. And he's, and he's not all wrong. So strike that. He's not all wrong. Not totally. He's, he's not all wrong. But Luke 4.18, Jesus cites Isaiah. So Luke 4.18, Jesus cites Isaiah. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll and gave it to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue, synagogue there, that's the same word for ecclesia, by the way, that we see translated in the uh, Old Testament, but that's another video. Uh, so there's been gathered bodies, but anyway. That's what, that's what a synagogue is. It's basically like a church meeting like we have today. We're fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Wow. If I could pick to go back to a place or a time, this might be one of them. Jesus is there. He reads Isaiah. Here's a prophecy. This prophecy is hanging in the balance. This is going to happen at some point, God says. And then what? This guy shows up from Nazareth, this carpenter with, with followers. He reads it and says, yeah, this prophecy you've been waiting for, right now. Fulfilled right now. And what's Jesus citing? He's citing Isaiah. He's citing Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Like it's word for word because it's uh, the Hebrew. Sometimes it's not word for word because somebody in the New Testament is citing the Greek version of the Old Testament. So it's slightly variant. Anyway, so right there, put that in the back of your mind. So this is Luke 4. In Luke 7, just a few chapters later, one of my favorite gospels, probably my favorite gospel, honestly. Probably because I'm preaching through Acts at my church. But anyway, it's my church. I own it. Uh, the When the men came to him, and this is what this man's talking about. He's also referencing, it's the same instance in Matthew 11, 5 and other places. Well, just 11 in general, not just verse 5. And when the man, men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the one to come or should we look for another? So notice right there, they're looking for someone. There was anticipation. The, the Messiah was coming. That's a big deal. In that hour, he healed many, this is Jesus, people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. Let's stop right there. We think, yeah, you know, 
healing people, but we do that today through medicine. First of all, that was miraculous and instant. Even if it wasn't Jesus, but even the apostles in the first pages of Acts with John and and Peter and the temple, they heal the, the paralytic. He's just leaping up, praising God, right? He's 40 years old, roughly. No PT, no training, no stretching, no surgeries, no weeks of whatever. He's literally begging. He's been this way his whole life. And then he's leaping, praising God. If you don't, if, if, if you don't, Use that and see that as a miracle. You know, I want want evidence, blah, 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 blah. Well, nothing's going to prove you. Even if somebody would arise from the dead, you would not believe. Rather, believe the text because it's God's word. That's why you should believe it. Not because I said so. Not because anybody else says so. But believe it because it's God's word. That's why. But notice in that situation, and I think it's Acts 4, maybe 3, 3 or 4. He's referencing, I just preached it, well. Months ago, but anyway. The Sanhedrin doesn't deny that this guy was healed. They don't say anything. They don't even question that. They just tell him, don't just stop talking about Jesus. Just just quit it. Right? Just go away. Stop it. We don't like you talking about Jesus. It's messing up our whole system. We're gonna lose some power. We're gonna lose some money. We're gonna lose some influence. No, no, no. Right? It doesn't work, right? Because then all the twelve apostles, they beat them. And then in chapter seven, they kill Stephen, who wasn't an apostle, but anyway. He's still there preaching the good news. So this guy here is talking about healing. Okay, he's very charismatic. I get it. Fine. But healing blind people doesn't happen. It still doesn't happen in our modern time. Still. It is literally impossible or, you know, 99.9999% possible to be healed when you're blind. Like straight blind. And yet... Jesus heals people who are blind. Never happened in the Old Testament. It only happens in the New. So there's all these instances of talking about healing blind people when they've never seen it. Pun intended. So Jesus is referencing. So he's in Luke 4. He says, this prophecy has been fulfilled in your myth, myths, the prophecy from Isaiah. Then he's here. And these guys show up, John the Baptist's disciples, what Isaiah Saldivar says. And he says, go tell John what you've seen and heard. And his justification is, hey, look, experiences matter, man. You you need to believe the experience. Jesus doesn't say, go look in the Bible. He doesn't say, go look in the Torah, the law and the prophets. Actually, he does, though. You're wrong, Isaiah. You're wrong, man. So I don't know if he if this guy doesn't know his Bible or if he's just being duplicitous. I'm not sure, but like, So much of the Gospels and what Jesus did was particularly, it was not ad hoc randomness. It was rather complete, structured fulfilling. I mean, he fulfilled hundreds of prophecies, hundreds. Some were intentional, like super easy, like, oh, you know, going on a donkey. Okay, sure. But other stuff like, you know, being born of a virgin. I mean, can you control that? I, I can't. Nobody can control that. Let I mean, nobody can control being born, let alone being born of a woman who has never known a man. He is saying, go look at the Bible. Why? Because he's telling him to cite, he's citing Isaiah. Isaiah 35. Verse 5, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Isaiah 42, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from dungeon and the prison, the and from prison those who sit in darkness. Isaiah 29, 18. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and out of the gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. Chapter 32, verse 3 and 4 of Isaiah. Then the eyes of those who will not, who, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Psalm 146. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. There's nobody righteous. No one. Chill out. Just chill out. Isaiah 50, verse 4. The Lord God has given me a tongue to those who are taught, and that I may, how I sustain with a word, I may know how to sustain with a word 
him who is weary. Morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear those who are taught. Several other passages. Several other passages. Jesus is literally quoting the very thing that this guy says. Oh yeah, Jesus doesn't say, go look at the Bible. He says, go look at your experience. Trust your experience. No, he's not, dude. Totally wrong, man. Not, not even close. And now he does mix in and say, the experiences affirm the message. Well, yeah, that's true. That's exactly why they have the experiences. Not just to believe them ad hoc and randomly, but rather to affirm what is being said. I'm preaching Acts 8. We started Acts 8 this last week. Dipped into that a little bit. And the the servants, they're not deacons yet. The servants in Acts 6 are being given the power to heal. Just like the apostles were before. Just like Jesus was as well. It wasn't just Jesus healing. Many other people were healing as well. But all through the power of Christ. All through his God's power. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk, Peter tells the paralytic. And so we can understand that what's happening here is Jesus is saying, go look at the Bible. And I tell you, go look at the Bible. Don't trust your experiences. Because then he says, he builds the straw man here of, well, you know, God doesn't heal, blah, 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 cancer and this and this and this. Therefore, your experience. No, 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 no. No one's saying that. If anyone is saying, hey, you had cancer you know, whatever stage, and it's terrible, bad, and whatever, and you've been praying fervently and, 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 and fasting, seeking the Lord, your church has been doing that with you, and then you're healed? I mean, I've heard of instances of this happening. Do we have a God who heals or not? Yes, of course. Yes, of course, Isaiah Saldivar. Yes, of course. I'm not saying that he's not. I'm saying when, you know, do the leg lengthening of the quarter inch, right, or the casting out the demon of doubt and worry, no, that's, bogus nonsense. That's not healing at all. That's a show. That's a show. And we're going to look here, at least in my church, and if you want to check it out, it's newharvestbaptist.org, newharvestbaptist.org. Um, we've got, I put my, we put the um, sermons up as well on YouTube. But anyway, there's I this magician in Samaria who's being amazing and doing all these magical things, incantations and whatnot. And then They come to Christ, the people of Samaria. He comes to Christ, and then now he's amazed at Philip's signs and wonders. Philip's doing it. But it's affirming the message, right? Because people aren't going to believe it or are not going to believe it, aren't going to believe it, excuse me. And, I mean, that's just how God has ordained it to be. Now we have the complete word. We can read it and we can say, yes, praise God, these messages, these things. Now, I would love to see people raised from the dead. But I already believe people raised from the dead. Okay? So I don't need some affirmation of like, you know, my grandma, who's no longer with us, being raised from the dead. I don't need that. And I'm always reminded of the rich man and Lazarus. You know the story Jesus tells? There's a rich man. He's got this. He's got much. And the poor the poor man, Lazarus, he's got the sores and the dogs, the trash collectors. They're not cute little puppies, by the way. They're garbage collectors. That's what dogs were. I love dogs, but not as much as most people. Anyway, they're licking his sores. It's just so gross and oozy and and raw. Like, it's just so nasty. And and it's such a graphic image. They both die. He's in torment, the rich man. The, The poor man, Lazarus, is in Abraham's bosom. Now, notice we don't know the rich man's name. Lazarus, we know his name. And there's this discussion between Abraham and the rich man. Go tell my brothers, go this, go that. Tell Lazarus to dip water on my tongue. It's in, it's in torment here. And ultimately Abraham says they should listen to Moses and the prophets. And he says, no, father Abraham, if somebody rises from the dead. And he says, if they don't listen, this is Abraham again, Jesus, you know, telling this story. Abraham tells this man, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't believe even if somebody were to rise from the dead. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I know I got a lot of new subs. Drop a comment. Let me know if you haven't already. I know several people yet said yesterday, hey, I'm from Texas. Had somebody from South Africa, which is wonderful. Uh, Really cool to see the reach beyond just uh, America. But yeah, tell me where you're from if you're a new sub. 
uh, if you haven't done that already, it's, it's, I just, I just like it. I'm not like taking any like polls or, you know, your name's not on some list or something. <laughs> I'm sure it is for YouTube, uh, the government and whatnot, but not for me. So I just like to build a community because that's what we're doing here. Uh, that's why I'm doing this, being against the world for the world. Isaiah needs to be corrected. He's not, he's not correct. He, this Jesus did cite the Old Testament, and yet he's acting like, yeah, it's no big deal. You don't really need to cite the Old Testament. Trust your experiences. Well, first of all, again, that's in the Old, that's in the New Testament that these signs and wonders are happening. It's evident the signs and wonders that happen in the New Testament, which weren't all that often, ultimately. If you space out the timing, it wasn't like every day people are getting healed like crazy. It was still rare, right? Even in the Old Testament, it was still rare. It was not all the time. Although the charismatics want to make it seem like it's all the time, but it's not. It's just not. I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, um, go ahead and like and comment if you, uh, if you don't mind. It does help the old algorithm out. And share this as well. It's a three-piece special. And if you have not subbed, please do so so you don't miss my next video. Also, ring the bell. Just all the youtube -y stuff. Right? All the youtube -y stuff. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Uh, and uh, be against the world for the world, okay? We'll see ya.